Assalamualaikum and greetings to everyone. My name is Madam Siti Hajar Binti Noor Ashuddin and today our lecture topic is one of the biggest macromolecules which is the carbohydrates. Let's get started. The main component in carbohydrate is made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atom. There are several properties which include the biological, physical and chemical part to be explained. First one, carbohydrate is a large group of organic compound and it also called as saccharide, known as sugar. As mentioned earlier, it contains the elements of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. In its chemical structure, it contains a carbonyl group and multiple hydroxyl groups. Carbohydrate is produced by a green plant and bacteria through a process called photosynthesis. As you can see, here is the empirical formula and elemental compositions of carbohydrates. And the examples of carbs are sugar, glycogen, starch and cellulose. In this slide, it will explain on the general functions of different types of carbohydrates. The first one is sugar. It will provide an accessible source and store of energy, especially in human and animal. Glycogen also play the same role like sugar as it will act as energy source and storage in human and animals. Another example of carbohydrates is starch, which is a common as a food storage in plant. And lastly, the cellulose is an important material for cell wall structure to support in plant. Somehow, it also acts as a fiber in human diet. Now, let's move to the classifications of carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is classified into three groups. The first one is monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide. Let's take a look one by one. Monosaccharide is known as a simple sugar. The examples of monosaccharide is glucose, fructose, and galactose. Disaccharide is a combination of two monosaccharides and the examples of disaccharides are maltose, sucrose and lactose. Lastly, polysaccharide. Polysaccharide consists of hundreds of monosaccharides and joined together forming a long chain. The examples of polysaccharide is the starch, glycogen and cellulose. Let's move to the first group of sugar, the monosaccharide. The chemical formula of monosaccharide is stated in this diagram and is referred to the number of carbon backbone. The terminology of monosaccharide are taken from the Greek word mono means singles and saccharum means sugar. Monosaccharide is the simplest carbohydrate and it cannot be further hydrolyzed. All monosaccharide are reducing sugar. Later, I will explain about reducing sugar in the next slide. Chemical properties of monosaccharides, they are sweet, solid crystalline, has low molecular mass, and they are very soluble in water. Monosaccharide also classified based on the number of carbon backbone and the position of carbonyl group. Here, as you can see, if there are three carbon, the sugar are known as triose. If there are four carbon backbone, the sugar known as tetrose. So let me test you now. What will be called for monosaccharide that having 5 and 6 carbon backbone? Sure, for 5 carbon backbone, the sugar known as pentose. For 6 carbon backbone, the sugar known as hexose. The example of monosaccharide are glucose, fructose and galactose. Okay, let me show you one of the examples of hexose sugar that contains 6 carbon backbone which is the galactose and glucose. As we look here, they are very similar, but actually they are different. They are differ from each other according to the location of hydroxyl group at carbon number 4. Let's take a look. For galactose, at carbon number 4, the hydroxyl group are located at the upper part. While for glucose, at carbon number 4, the hydroxyl group are located at the lower part. As they combine together, they will form a disaccharide known as lactose. This table shows the difference between glucose and galactose. 
I just want to highlight, even though the molecular formula is the same, which is C6H12O6, but they are different in their chemical and physical properties. In previous slide, I have mentioned one of the properties of carbohydrate is having a carbonyl group and multiple hydroxyl group. But the position of carbonyl group can also determine the types of sugar. They are known as positional isomer. Although the position of carbonyl group is at the end of the carbon backbone, while for ketose, the position of carbonyl group is in the middle of the carbon backbone. Let's take a look in the picture. As you can see here, for aldose, the carbonyl group located at the end of the carbon backbone. For ketose, the position of carbonyl group is located in the middle of the carbon backbone. Alright, next is disaccharide with a general chemical formula C12H22O11. First thing is the terminology. From the Greek word di means double, saccharum means sugar. Disaccharide consists of two monosaccharides that are linked via glycosidic bond by a process called condensation. For its chemical properties, they are small, sweet, solid crystalline and soluble in water, similar with the monosaccharide. During the formation reaction, the molecules of water is removed and the reverse reaction, which is breakdown process, is called as hydrolysis, where the water molecule is needed to break down the disaccharide. The example of disaccharide is maltose, sucrose, and lactose. Here is the formation reaction together with source and function for each types of disaccharide. For maltose, glucose combined with glucose producing maltose with water. It can be found in the malt sugar for germination. For sucrose, glucose combined with fructose producing the sucrose with water. It can be found in the sugar cane, table sugar and its function for transport in plants. For lactose, glucose combined with galactose forming lactose with water and it can be found in the milk sugar in mammal and act as energy source. In this slide, I will highlight the formation reaction for disaccharide. Let's take maltose formation as an example. As you can see here, one molecule of glucose will combine with another glucose molecule. The hydroxyl group from one glucose and hydrogen from another glucose will be eliminated or removed as water molecule. Therefore, this reaction is known as condensation. Please remember, the reaction must produce water at the end of the reaction. Then maltose will be produced by joining both glucose by using the glycosidic bond as highlighted in the blue square line here. This bond linking the two monosaccharide to form a disaccharide. Okay, these are the other formation reaction. As you can see in the blue square, the glycosidic bond formation and each of the reaction must produce water as a byproduct. Again, I would like to highlight that the reaction must take water formation okay, for each reaction or condensation process. This is very important uh, in this reaction. If you didn't state a water molecule in your reaction, it means that the equation is incorrect. So here is water, water and water. Now let me explain to you the reducing and non-reducing sugar. What is reducing sugar? It is a type of sugar that can reduce Cu2 plus ion into Cu plus ion where the blue color in the Benedict solution will turn into brick red color after heating. The example of reducing sugar is all the monosaccharide together with the maltose and lactose, while sucrose is the only sugar which is known as the non-reducing sugar. Now let's move to the final class of carbohydrates, which is polysaccharide. Polysaccharide is a combination of monosaccharides. There are more than two 
uh, monosaccharide that combine together by a process condensation. The structure of polysaccharide, they are variable in length, some may be branched, some may be unbranched, and can be folded or unfolded with a straight chain, or can be coiled. The chemical properties of polysaccharide, they are large in size, they are not sweet and insoluble in water. The example are cellulose, starch and glycogen. But for starch and glycogen, they are known as storage polysaccharide, while the cellulose is known as structural polysaccharide. While there are other examples of polysaccharide, where a modified glucose for structural polysaccharide. For example, we have peptidoglycan that can be found in the bacterial cell wall and chitin that can be found in the fungal cell wall or also in the exoskeletons of the insects. In this table, I would like to show to you the differences between the three major examples of polysaccharide. As you can see here, all of them are composed more than 100 glucose, even up until 100,000 of glucose. Let's start with the cellulose. Cellulose structure is a long straight chain and parallel linked together via hydrogen bond, as you can see in the diagram. Its function for the structural component in the cell wall of the plant. For starch, it is divided into two types, which is amylose and amylopectin. For amylose, it also a long straight chain, but the structure is folded, similar to the diagram. While amylopectin, it is a branches polysaccharide, but both of them, amylose and amylopectin, they are used for the energy storage in plant. Last one is the glycogen. For glycogen, they are in the form of branches structure, and it also acts as energy storage and only can be found in animal. Last but not least, chitin. Chitin is also one of the other examples of polysaccharide. It is a derivative of carbohydrates. It is naturally occurring polysaccharide existing in atropods, like the outer shell of crustaceans and the insect's exoskeleton. It also can be found in the fungal cell wall. Chitin is the second most abundant natural polymer after cellulose. Okay, that's the end of the topics of carbohydrates. So these are all the references. Thank you and till we meet again. Bye-bye.